Yeah, we'll be talking about apes today. So I'm Matt Clarkson from ARM. So we talk a lot, lot about hermeticity uh, in Bazel. Um, so that is not using tools from the system. There's a lot of talks on hermeticity, so I'm not going to go into that now. What I'm going to go through is a bit of a story about what this means for you as a wall developer. So someone comes to you and says, there's this tool, we want to create a wall set around it. Uh, and then you realize that tool is written in Go, and they produce pre-built static linked binaries for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you build a rule set around it, and then you use the download in Bazel to get it, and everything's good. Really easy, nice and easy, very good, all hermetic. And then someone comes along to you and says, I need to use SED, which is written in C and C++, and you need to get that and have a tool chain around it. So you go, okay, Bazel can build C and C++ projects, we'll build that, and then you realize you need to get a Hermetic CC toolchain. In the Bazel mod, there's Hermetic CC toolchain, it's going well. You've got that all built, and then they want to run it in a repository wall. So you need to then build it pre-built and then download it. You realize software engineering is really hard, you have a panic attack, and you go to a cave somewhere, and you give up. Hopefully we don't get to that point, we're going to build things and use Ape in this situation. So the second part is hermeticity, but we want to have consistency. So GNU said is not the same as BSD said, uh, and we want to get consistent execution across all our environments. So we also want to get it on Windows, Linux, Mac, and even BSD. So what does the Ape module provide? Ape brings hermetic, runnable, actually portable, executable Ape targets. So you can use this today, Bazel run Ape, Ape said, and you can get the version, um, but there's lots of tools under there. There's said, Python, um, Bash, uh, LS, lots of the base Unix tools. They're all downloaded hermetically, they're individual binaries, so they don't require run files, and they get consistent operation across uh, operating systems and CPUs. So I'll just dig into like, how an Ape binary actually works. So it's built out of the project called Cosmopolitan. So Cosmopolitan's goal is to create a, uh, make C into a build anywhere, run anywhere language. So it provides a Cosmo CC toolchain that builds C into a fat polyglot executable format. In this situation, Hello will run across all these operating systems and AMD64 and ARM64, all from one binary. So then what is an actually portable bind, uh, executable? It is actually uh, extends the portable executable format, uh, and on Windows it just runs as a PE, but on Unix it actually runs as a shell script, extracts a, a eight binary launcher, and then the eight binary launcher figures out the correct OS and CPU specific codes to my, um, mount into memory, and crucially as well, they can actually store data files within the same binary using pkzip, because pkzip, the header, is at the end of the binary. So for example, Python, can, you can store all of the standard library for Python within the binary. The Ape launcher will do the uh, correct thing to unpack those files and then run the uh, code to make sure that it's got those data files. And on Linux, there's a detail. You can uh, map the Ape launcher to bin format miscellaneous, and it will uh, avoid the self-extracting part. So as an extension of that, what is superconfigure? So superconfigure is a wrapper around the Cosmos CC toolchain that brings all of the benefits of uh, auto tools in, into the Ape uh, ecosystem. So it is a project up on GitHub. It builds a lot of uh, the common Unix tools. Uh, it also brings in Python. There's also Git in there. Um, there's a lot of tools on there. So within that project, uh, they're doing regular GitHub releases. Uh, you're getting constant updates. Um, Cosmopolitan is, is an active project. There's a lot, a lot going on there. But Cosmopolitan actually also versions its binaries on Cosmo.zip uh, at this location. So the Ape module downloads these binaries for you, and it does a few bits of setup to make sure they run um, in whatever environment you're running Bazel in. So that will give you runnable targets that you can use in tool chains or use as dependencies in your rules uh, for these common uh, Unix tools, which means you can be hermetic down to the actual base. 
But the Ape module also provides a helper, helper rule called Ape Toolchain. It's actually a macro, and what it does is it will take an Ape uh, target and then register that uh, for all of the different Ape platforms. So then you easily get a toolchain that you can use in other rules, uh, and it will make sure that it resolves the correct tool on different remote execution targets or whatever you're running on. There's the Ape Ape toolchain info uh, targets for that that will provide you a toolchain info that can be used with toolchains. And then finally, getting back to what we said at the start, you need to have a pre-built so that you can use it in a repository rule. Uh, and the Ape module uses this extension to ex uh, export the different binaries as targets that you can use within repository rules. So in this situation, um, you're, you need to extract a downloaded tarball that uses Z standard as a compression. Python doesn't have Z standard built into it to decompress, so you can use this snippet of code to get Z standard, pass that into the repository rule, use that to decompress Z standard, and unpack the tarball. So that allows you to be both hermetic in repository rules and also in your uh, action, action graph as well. And that's it. It's in the BCR Ape. Try it out. It's in beta at the moment. If you have any issues with it, um, ping me on Bazel Slack. I'd be really interested to hear of any usage. Um, anything else specifically to the binaries, it will likely be an upstream bug, but I can help with that. And that's it. That's an introduction to the Ape module. <laughs>